Hello, my name is Jamie Lemke. I'm a senior research fellow and associate director of academic and student programs at the Mercatus Center at George Mason University. And I'm here with Pete Betke, a professor of economics and a professor of philosophy at George Mason University. He's also the director of the F.A. Hayek Program for Advanced Study in Philosophy, Politics, and Economics and the Vice President of Research at the Mercatus Center at GMU. His most recent book is Living Economics, Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today, Pete. It's wonderful to be here with you, Jamie. So what does self-governance have to do with water rights? So two things about that. They wanted to pick a problem that seemed to not be easily solved by market mechanisms alone. Okay. So standard economic theory, had pointed out that these things are what might call public goods, um, and they had certain serious uh, problems associated with market-driven solutions for that alone. And yet, like a lot of history had happened where people had managed their water rights and they had done things without necessarily central control by government. And so how is it that communities have in fact solved their collective action problems in the past and and that became a big, big theme. So they started by picking examples of where it appeared that um, economic theory strictly understood would, would have to remain silent about how maybe a market mechanism or how voluntary mechanisms could solve the collective action problem. And then they demonstrated how communities, in fact, find rules so they can live better together and while solving these collective action problems. And water rights is a very stark one. But it, 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 to a lot of people on the outside, they think of, of Lynn and they think of collective action problems, commons problems, uh, you know, common pool resource problems. And, uh, and, and, and then they see Vincent doing federalism and constitutions, and they think of them as separate projects. But really, they're not. They're one and the same. So part of the reason why Vincent believed in the nature of the compound republic and what the political theory of that was is this sort of Tocquevillian idea of a self-governing society, decentralized society, um, a society of free and responsible individuals, um, and, and understanding that you know, the strict dichotomizations that exist in the social sciences don't aid us in thinking through those issues. So it's a fascinating kind of research program historically and contemporaneously or whatever. And so and that's one of the things that's striking about both Vincent and Lynn is that their work while governed by a very theory, was always grounded with their feet on the ground with real world problems. So they took as their, so they, you know, again, think about that political workshop in political theory and policy analysis. So they were always stuck to the ground to do theorizing rather than having their theorizing be free floating and sort of abstract. So they're in a lot of ways different than John Rawls, for example, when they go to sort of find how are the rules evolved that we can live better together um, and realize the gains from social cooperation, or another way to put that is how to realize the gains from you know, uh, productive specialization and peaceful social cooperation. You know, They were trying to figure out the framework within which that takes place. And one of the workshop's early projects involved Eleanor and a lot of the people that she worked with actually riding around in police cars to yeah. understand better what was happening with the provision of police services in the local community. And you, you brought up this issue of them wanting to have their feet on the ground. So you see that manifesting right away in the research. Yeah. And I know that's something that you've picked up on as well. So you've incorporated field work into what you do in a variety of ways and you've emphasized uh, its importance as a method in the social sciences. So can you talk a little bit about how you've used that in your work, why you think it's important? Yeah, well, there's a great paper by these, you know, people Lemke and Palagashvili <laughs> and Betke on Lynn and her work on that. So, yes, I mean, everyone should read it. Um, no, the, um, so my involvement with field work and also with the Ostroms, because they're actually contemporaneously, they happened in, at the same time, was, uh, has to do with my study of the Soviet system. So when I started studying the Soviet economy in the, in the mid-80s, it was fracturing, but it still existed. 
So when I started graduate school, Gorbachev wasn't yet in power. But when I finished graduate school, Gorbachev was in power, and he was in the midst of doing what uh, became known as his glasnost, uh, which meant public frankness or public truthness, and then uh, perestroika, which is restructuring of the economic system. And so that happened at the end. But um, when I started studying the Soviet Union, I started studying its history and its practice. And the real question there was there was this big disjoint between the way the system was supposed to work in theory and the way that operated in practice. And this was one of the real great strengths of what Lynn was doing with her work on common pool resources, is studying the disjoint between the rules in form and the rules in use. So the rules in form um, might not look like they can solve like the collective action problem, but the rules in use actually find ways to work around the difficulties and come to a solution. Now, I should point out that in Lynn's work, what she believed that you should do is what's called multiple methods methodology. And so one of her really strong essays in this is an essay in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, um, which is um, her studying uh, forestry uh, patterns. And so she, uh, I'm not going to remember the exact title, but basically the approach was she relied on satellite imagery, she relied on field work, and then she also did computer simulations, you know, or, uh, and, and so it was like this in the lab, in the field, from the sky, right, kind of idea. And her idea was that each of us as social scientists must become a specialist in one of these kind of methodologies. And then what we should do is realize gains from trade with other social sciences. So she was a collaborative researcher. So if you look at her uh, research, she has lots of co-authorships and lots of you know, projects that she led with different people. And she was always doing that kind of, kind of work. And, uh, and that's because she was always looking for these gains from trade. They did that a lot with the workshop in Indiana where they constantly had visitors over and, uh, and new blood constantly. One of the really great things about the, uh, the workshop is at the university there, at, at the buildings, they actually have like a house for the people that come and visit and they're right there, you know. And so it's a really, um, she built that community up, her and Vincent, and uh, it's just an amazing shop. And so I think this multiple methods methodology thing is really strong. And the problem is, is that the least respected of those is field work. And that's what needs to be always the grounding. Because if you want to understand this issue of the de facto rules or the rules in use, you only have access to that if you go into the field and you ask people, you know, how they are solving their problems and you pay respect. So one way to think about Eleanor's work as well is that she had tremendous faith in the power of the local people to solve problems themselves rather than have a one-size-fits-all problem from, you know, a bureaucracy coming down, whether or not it's in a, a municipality or whether or not it's in a federal government or whether or not it's in an international agency. It's in the power of the people to solve their problems themselves that we see the emergence of self-governing societies, which is what she was trying to understand and to appreciate as the nature of, of uh, sort of what a true democracy, democratic system is.